more powerful than the nuclear bomb. And love can only be expressed in one way, feelings. Feelings, nothing more than feelings, trying to forget my feelings of love, teardrops. The way I look at it, the only one who benefited from this Aquino killing are the communists. They have made us look as if we are engaged in killing our political opponents. We have bent backwards in helping political opposition grow and allowed them to win elections that we could have won easily with a little more push. We have written an election call that gave them more rights than they ever expected. But now, the communists have made us look bad because of this assassination. I'm concerned I need you. Magpakailan pama forevermore, my darling. Mahal na mahal kita. Pero kapag niloko mo ako, pupukpukin kita. That sounds beautiful. You don't even know what I was saying. Say whatever you like. You know what I said? What? I said that I love you very, very much. But if ever you cheat on me, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. know who killed Ninoy Aquino. President Marcos has promised to form an investigative panel. We're still waiting. The delay, however, doesn't seem to bother Washington. Since President Reagan took office, the Marcoses haven't had to worry about American support. We love your adherence to democratic principle and to the democratic processes. In World War II, Filipinos and Americans fought and died together. And you yourself, Mr. President, played an unforgettably heroic part in that conflict. An increasing number of Americans are asking themselves why. Here is a large part of the reason. Clark Air Base and Subic Bay Naval Bases, massive strategically vital links in America's Pacific Defense Command. America has a lease with the Philippine government until 1992, and defense planners say the bases are crucial. 
This is Imelda Marcos's film center, modeled on the Parthenon. It's the latest of her building projects designed to impress tourists from America and around the world. Last year, when crews pushed around the clock to rush completion in time for the First Lady's International Film Festival, tragedy struck. An entire floor collapsed, trapping the workers below. The cement had not had time to dry properly. The Marcos Control Media said 28 died, but people here believe 168 workers were buried alive in quick drying concrete. But Mrs. Marcos would not allow work to stop to remove the bodies, which were simply covered over with a fresh layer of cement. Now many Filipinos say the place is haunted. The building opened on time and Hollywood stars flocked to the gala. It was reminiscent of the lavish opening of an earlier pet project of Mrs. Marcos, the Philippine Cultural Center, when then Governor Ronald Reagan and his wife Nancy were on hand. The friendship between the two presidents and their respective first ladies goes back at least that far. The tourists don't come to the place they call Smoky Mountain, a fetid steaming mass of garbage where 10,000 Filipinos have built a city. Amid this world of stench, they make a living by scavenging through the refuse of Manila. It is a place Imelda Marcos doesn't want the tourists to see. Despite the fact it has existed in the heart of Manila as long as many of Mrs. Marcos' other building projects. Filipinos arrive here from the provinces. They live here, they have children here, and every day they die here. This is Tony O'Neill reporting from Manila. We took that off the satellite. I want to talk to him. I'd like to tie my tie. <sighs> let, let me tie my tie. This better be good. This better be good. <laughs> Mrs. Marcos? Mr. O'Neill, you have made me uh, a little sad. I guess that explains my quick departure from home. I'm a fan of yours. Thank you. Even before you came here, I used to see you on American television, and I say to myself, what a young and intelligent man. <laughs> now I'm angry at myself because I have not explained to you why I have built all those buildings. You don't think I care about the people in Smoky Mountain, do you? Well, yes, ma'am. I'm sure you do. My report just asked, why don't you spend more money on them? Sit down. No. Here with me. Food is only one of the needs of the Filipino. There's something he needs even more than that. What is that? Respect. Until Ferdinand and I, the world looked down on the Philippines and on the Filipino. We were a poor third world country. We are still a poor country, but the buildings I have made have been noticed all over the world. We now have the respect of great artists, movie stars, and international leaders. <laughs> 